So about two years ago, we started looking at different programs for patient safety within hospitals. As a system, we didn't have a standardized way to really develop safety programs. Each member organization was doing their own thing. We found the Johns Hopkins model for CUSP, uh, Comprehensive Unit-Based Safety Programs, as one of the national um, leaders. When we first started CUSP, we learned that there was going to be a CUSP champion. Um, we knew that that person was Christy Quarian. So the frontline um, staff, when we met to talk about where's the next patient injury in this department going to come from, came up with about 30 different options and possibilities where patient injury could occur. From that list of about 30, um, they prioritized them and said, what's the highest risk uh, event that could happen here? A top priority on our list was how we function in um, code situations throughout the whole hospital. ER typically responds to um, a code throughout the hospital. As far as ER staff, we run our own codes. So it's super important that the core staff knew what to do and where our equipment was, uh, which led us to our first CUSP project on crash carts. The ED crash carts, we had three of our own crash carts which were built by ED nurses. Um, they were effective for the ED staff, but if we were going to a code or an emergency outside of the ER, taking our crash cart, other staff coming to help, the, the code team coming to help, they didn't know where any of our stuff was located. When staff were responding to a code on the floor, they were having a hard time finding different items because their carts were organized differently. If the code team doesn't know how to use all of our equipment and if we go to a code in another department and we don't know how to use their equipment, it, it can delay care. Our frontline staff are the hands-on ones, right? So if they don't know where it is, then no one knows where it is, really. Um, and so it was really important that they were involved in the process and knowing. We took a list out of the cart. Um, it started based right on staff, frontline, once again. Um, they went through the cart. They decided what's in the cart. Um, which is a huge thing. Our central sterile team actually partnered up with us in doing this project and they are really open to checking all of the expirations in our carts for us and creating a bag system. So when an item is used, the bag essentially is ripped open um, on whatever drawer you're using and in that process those items um, go down to central sterile. They rebuild the bag and give it to us right on the spot. So there's no time delay between um, the time of the use of the crash cart to the time that the patient leaves our department. We found that some of our meds didn't seem to be in the right places where we thought we would need them. So um, we met with pharmacy, we made a new map, we removed some meds that weren't being used very often, that weren't part of ACLS, um, and added meds in that we would need, or extra meds or additional meds if we needed them you know, outside of the ER where our Pixis are located. When you show up to a code, doesn't matter where, who's doing what role? So we had name tags made with the identifiers of who's on compressions, who's the recorder, who's um, the med nurse on that day. And a list is kept in our nursing supervision office um, so that code team, when they respond, were able to have that communication with them. Our project grew immensely from the just changing the crash carts. We developed a trauma alert. Then we ended up building a trauma cart. Um, we implemented new documentation for all our trauma patients, and that really um, also affected a lot of de departments. So x-ray, um, lab, radiology, CT, all those departments were impacted by this change that we thought was just going to be crash carts. It's super important um, that frontline staff are involved. That was really the key, getting the problems, the concerns, um, more importantly taking those problems and concerns and making something out of them. And I really think that's why CUSP has succeeded here. Uh, one of our key success points in the emergency department was, was with uh, the level of engagement by our provider staff right from the get-go. Not only did we ask our nursing and clinical folks that work in the department, what are your concerns around patient safety, what keeps you up at night, we asked our providers. So the really neat thing with CUSP is that they give you everything. Um, so the, the package includes how to introduce CUSP, how to lay the foundation, how to find the defects uh, within your organization, um, how to prioritize those defects. The idea of CUSP, how is your next patient going to be harmed, um, is something that staff can identify with. Um, so it's worked really well for us. It's neat because it's not a project. The idea with CUSP is that you roll it out and it just becomes the culture of the organization. With CUSP, you're never really done. You're always looking for a new defect and a new opportunity to improve patient care. And other units in member organizations are saying, when's our turn? When can we sign up? When can we do this? And, and uh, that's not something I've seen before.
as we implemented cusp um, we had naysayers this isn't going to work this is you know flavor of the month another program that we're implementing and what we discovered is that um, staff began to see cusp as a tool to get stuff done um, and, and in fact it became a verb in some places so let's cusp this issue when something came up um, because they felt like they had good leadership support to implement that particular program and so even for some defects that we haven't put into the cusp program we follow the cusp process uh, to try to resolve it and when we say cuss we know it's a big deal and so people put some energy into it.